So we're reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge, text number 33. Kimpuna Brahmana Punya Kimpuna Brahmana Punya Bhakta Raja Shayastata Bhakta Raja Shayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajaswamam Imam Prapya Bajaswamam Kim Puna Brahmana Punya Kim Puna Brahmana Punya Bhakta Raja Shayastata Bhakta Raja Shayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Krakya Bajaswam Imam Krakya Bajaswam Kim Puna Brahmana Punya Kimpuna Brahmana Punya Bhakta Raja Shayastata Bhakta Raja Shayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajasvamam Imam Prapya Bajasvamam Kimpuna Brahmana Punya Kimpuna Brahmana Punya
Bhakta, Bhakta, Devotees, Devotees, Raja, Raja, Rishaya, Rishaya, Saintly King, Saintly King, Tata, also, also, Anityam, Anityam. Temporary, temporary, asukam, asukam, full of miseries, full of miseries, lokam, lokam, planet, planet, imam, imam, thus, thus, prapya, prapya, gaining, But just from be engaged in loving service. Mom, unto me, unto me. Translation. How much more? How much more? This is so. This is so. Of the righteous brahmanas. Of the righteous brahmanas. The devotees, the devotees and the saintly king and the saintly kings therefore, therefore having come to this temporary measurable world engaging loving service unto me engaging loving service unto me purport by Srila Prabhupada in this material world there are classifications of people, but after all, the world is not a happy place for anyone. It is clearly stated here. Anityam asukam lokam. This world is temporary and full of miseries not habitable for any sane gentleman. This world is described by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be temporary and full of miseries. Some philosophers, especially Mayavadi philosophers, say that the world is false, but we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the world is not false, it is temporary. There is a difference between temporary and false. This world is temporary, but there is another world which is eternal. This world is miserable, but the other world is eternal and blissful. Arjuna was born in a saintly royal family. To him also the Lord said, Take to my devotional service and come quickly back to Godhead back home. No one should remain in the temporary world, full as it is with miseries. Everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that he can be eternally happy. The devotional service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Everyone should therefore take to Krishna consciousness and make his life perfect. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Jnana Jnana Sahakarya Akshur Mitaikya Mitaikya Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Sapitam Yaila Bhutale Swayam Ramakadamayam Dadati Svapadamitam Vandeham Shri Guru Shriyata Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajayam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parjana Saitam 
Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Dada Shri Nishaka Nitam Sya E Krishna Karana Sindhu Vinana Vallu Vigatpate Gopesha Gopita Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Rapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vinishwari Vrindavan-sri-hari-prana-mamya-hari-pe-vancha-kalpata-rupyasya-kripa-sindhu-vairvacha-patita-nam-bhava-nivyo-vaishnavinyo-namo-nama-namo-om-vishnu-padaya-
and they have a nice smell. So we get some pleasure from these flowers. But how long do you get pleasure? How long will we be able to enjoy the, the flowers? In a very short time, the flowers will wither and dry up. And will have no more smell. And the beauty will be gone. So that is the nature of the sense objects. Not only not only flowers, but everything which we enjoy in this material. Just like you get a nice car. Right? Malaysian people are lucky, they all have cars. Just coming into the, the driveway here. Wow, so many cars, you know. But then I remember, this is Malaysia. <laughs> There's no public transport. So you have to have some kind of transport. So so you get the car, and, and, and the new car looks nice, and you enjoy it. But how long can we enjoy it for? Somebody got this nice car and told me, he said, well, it will be good for 12 years. <laughs> Twelve years, that's quite a long time. Keep a car. You know, by twelve by the time twelve years is up it will be not much it won't be so nice to look at and you won't enjoy it so much. The other night one of the devotees in Ipo he took me in this car, his old car. He had a car which is from 1954. <laughs> it was an English Austin. So he was taking me back to the temple. I'd been at a program and he took me in this car. I was shocked. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite a different experience. Yeah. <laughs> quite a bit of noise. There was no no safety bell. There was no there was no thing to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> I and we were driving along and we stopped at the traffic light and some, some other car came by and the guy opened his window and said, Hey, nice car. <laughs> <laughs> he could see it was a very old, 70 year old car, you know. So he was saying nice car, but you know, he, he was driving a, a new car. <laughs> Anyway, our, our body enjoys these kind of things, sense objects. They're made for the pleasure of our mind and senses. But we have to understand the nature of that pleasure. 
ஆனந்தர் <laughs> ஒரு <laughs> dirty city and it's crowded with people so kolkata poningala and ro kolkata irko konjam makkal thoda romba irko so if you have to use a public toilet in kolkata you just do your business quickly and get out <laughs> so in the mari adha toilet poduma nam inda velai pudichidhu odinne nam thiri vandrom so similarly here in this material world we should have the same kind of thinking we should think just do our business and get out so adhe parthan inda jada ulagathil vaala mose namba namba kadame mudichittu kudichikkala namba inda irundhe veliya avukkam so lord krishna is telling us how we can get out so krishna bhagavan inda ulagathil inda jada ulagathil ipdi tappi porthe adu valiye irukkum he says imam pratya bajasva mam engage in my loving service kalipudi na namo krishna bhagavan ku anbu anbu mooliva namo bhakti kondu seidha to do service is the nature of every living entity yerkiyathu ellam jeevarasiyoda yerkiyana gona vande bhagavan ku kondu seidha we get pleasure in doing service so in part to the same bodu namo kandu just like the mother gives service to her children it's pleasure for them erkiya pathi or thai inda kolangalukku kolangalukku anbu kodupanga yena adu erkiyana gunam or thai and we see sometimes people you know they have no children they have dogs take the and their pleasure is to take the dog for the walk sila per inda kolangalukku illa ana naigal inda kolangiya paathu avanga inma adai vaagudraanga politicians their pleasure is supposed to come in serving the country so or politician pathigala erki avanga inda makkalukku thodu seyno and the the company the owner of the company likes to employ the workers so or company pathigala and modalla inda makkal inda vela karana ichu so we see in the world there's a lot of the mode of service is very prominent எல்லாருக்கு <laughs> doctor poniya anukinda na apdi thondu chela apdi kuda so that mode of service that is the nature of the living entity so thondu serthu erkiya ella jeevarachi oda dharma and we see even ferocious beasts like the lion that they're very gentle with the own cubs 
The lion can be very fierce to others, but for her own cup, she is very gentle. So that mood of service is the actual nature of the soul. Prabhupada tells us it just like the dharma of sugar <coughs> is sweet. So <coughs> And the dharma of the chili is hot. So so the same way the living entity also has a dharma, has a nature. So and that nature is to do service. In the material world, our service is directed to the bodily relationship. Somebody thinks, I'm a Chinese, I should serve the Chinese people. Somebody thinks, I'm an Indian, I should serve the Indian people. We are thinking in terms of the body. Just like some people think we are worshipping an Indian God. Why are you worshipping an Indian God? They do not understand <coughs> there is one God for everyone. God is not Indian or Russian or African or anything. God is the Supreme Lord of all living entities. But people are not very well educated about this. So we have to teach them, we have to teach them the basic knowledge. Just like you learn the basics, then if you learn the basics, then later on you can go on to the advanced studies. So here in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is teaching us the basics. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is teaching us, first of all, that we're not the body. And that's a difficult thing for us to really believe. So Because we very attached to the body. We look in the mirror and we think this is me. We don't see the self. We just see the body. And we forget who we really are. So the Lord Krishna is speaking this Bhagavad Gita, trying to wake everyone up. Telling us, wake up, wake up, sleeping soul. You have this rare birth. You have the human life. It's very special. Right? There are 84 lakh species of living entities and only 4 lakh are human species. So, just, just think how many 
mosquitoes there are in Malaysia. <laughs> and how many trees there are in Malaysia. There's so many other living entities beside the people. Hmm. Krishna Dwaya Prabhu was telling me he was driving along the road that one morning and there were wild boars running across the road. So Krishna Dwaya Prabhu We don't see them every day, but they're there. So Prabhu Rodi the Oti Kali would not party card, but they have one And there there are so many birds. So Rabu Kuri no Paramala Kana, one is very there's so many different creatures in the sea. So Rabu Divarachin Kadala Tinga. And we haven't even seen there's so many creatures we've never even heard about. So number eight is the Srila Prabhupada would tell us sometimes, he said, you know there's a fish called the Timingala fish. He said it's so big it can swallow a whale. Did you ever see that fish? Well, they're so big, tipping dots can just swallow it, no problem. We never saw these creatures. Our knowledge of the world is very limited. We think, oh, I, I, I've been to Kuala Lumpur, I know everything. <laughs> Just because we know a few cities around, nearby, we're thinking we know everything about the world. But there's a whole other world far beyond this world. <laughs> and there's many, many, many more living entities living in the other world. Just like people in Malaysia, they don't know how many people there are living in Russia or China or Africa. Even you go to Indonesia, why you see so many people. Indonesia no, We only know Malaysia. How to understand these other places? Well, we have to hear about them. We hear about them from people. people. One lady told me her brother went to America when he was a young man. He heard about America and he decided he wanted to go there. He went to America. He's been living there all his life. So, doesn't, of course, he's not happy, but still he went there. <laughs> he's suffering still. You don't get, you don't get away from the miseries. The lady's daughter went to America and she said, Yes, it's so nice here. We have different weather. There's a winter and you wear different clothes in the winter. In Malaysia, it's the same climate all year. You don't have to change the, the, the style of dress. But in America, we have the winter and the summer and we wear different clothes in different times of the year. She thought, very nice. Okay. 
I don't know. I, you know, I, I lived in England for many years. I thought it was always suffering. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada himself said, this is hell, this England. <laughs> Every day cloudy, never see the sun. You wash your cloth, you have to hang it up for a week to dry it. <laughs> Every day wet, windy, cold. But somehow some crazy people think, oh, very nice. Oh. <laughs> So we have to understand our knowledge of the world is very limited. Even on this planet, there's many things we don't know, places we've never been to. And the same way, there's another Oh, there's a whole nother world far beyond this world. And we can all go there. We're invited to go there. But you have to be qualified. Just like when you come to Malaysia, you have to enter Malaysia, you have to have Yeah, you need a passport, you need a visa. They want you to have another ticket, return ticket. But Lord Krishna says there's another world beyond this world. There is the spiritual world. The material world is very small compared to the spiritual world. And in the material world, there is birth and death. It's, the world is temporary and it is miserable. Even though the sun is shining, still it can be miserable. You know, if you were from England, you think the sun is shining. How you could must be everybody feels so happy. Oh, the sun is shining. So, so special day. Here in Malaysia, every day is sun shining. <laughs> but still, there's misery. <laughs> and even Arjuna, Arjuna is in, born in a royal family. Even for him, there is misery. <laughs> we would think, oh, if I was a king, if I was a prince, I would be happy. Is it, do you think for, if you're the king, even though we see everywhere, what, Dhamma, Hongku, long live the king, right? Everybody say, asking, saying the king will live a long time. Is the king happy? Because he's a king? No, king also has problems. So, the mosquitoes also bite the king. <laughs> the mosquito cannot think, oh, he's the king, I better not bite him. <laughs> mosquitoes don't make any distinction. So, 
even you're the king, you get problems, you get sick, you get troubles with different people. So, Sometimes one king's worried about the other kings, the other king's going to take away their kingdom. So Arjuna, he's in the royal family, but he's also got problems. So Lord Krishna is telling him, this is not your real home. So You don't belong here. Don't stay here. So we when we hear about a place, you know, we hear if we want to be attracted to, we want to go there. So the just like here in Malaysia, if you go in the travel agency, they'll put a picture, they'll show you Paris, gay party, go to Paris and enjoy friends, you know. But you go to, if you're in Paris, you'll see they have the poster. Malaysia, land of sunshine, <laughs> go to Malaysia. <laughs> Enjoy the Nasi Lemma. <laughs> People think, oh, Nasi Lemma, you should go to Malaysia. <laughs> So people hear about these different places and they become attracted. So Just like Rukmini, she heard about Krishna. So Rukmini She never met Krishna. But she'd heard about him. And that was enough for her. So she wanted to have, she wanted to be with Krishna. So she wrote to Krishna, she wrote a letter to Krishna. She, she told Krishna, I'm ready to take birth and die hundreds and thousands of times until I can get shelter at your lotus feet. So Lord Krishna was impressed when he got the letter from Rukmini and he understood that she is my very dear devotee. So Krishna Bhagavan the Rukmini so Lord Krishna then went to, to where Rukmini was, where she, she was supposed to get married to Sishupal, and R Lord Krishna kidnapped her just before she married Sishupal. So Rukmini then Sishupal to Krishna said, "Here, here, see, to get what she needs." Then after that, Krishna paid Rukmini a cattle feeder. So this way, Rukmini was able to satisfy her desire. But sometimes Krishna would tease Rukmini. Just like when they were already grandparents, they'd had children and their children had grown up and married. And so one day Krishna was joking with Rukmini and he told her, he said, you know, I'm not really fit to be your husband. So, he said, no, I'm just, I'm just from a cowherd family. And you, you're the, you're the daughter of a king. I'm not worthy to be your husband. 
And there were so many other kings, they all wanted to marry you. So, so I think you should, you know, maybe you should just leave me, you better, you know, maybe can, maybe you can still marry one of them. Of course, they were already grandparents at this time. But Rukmini took it so seriously that she fainted. Just the thought of being separate from Krishna was unbearable. So Rukmini had so much attachment to Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna had more attachment to the gopis. Although Krishna was married to queens, he had beautiful queens, very beautiful women were his queens. And it is said Lord Krishna had ten sons and one daughter by each of his queens. But still, when Krishna would sleep at night, he would call the names of other ladies. He would be saying, Oh Radha, Oh Lalita, Oh Vishaka. So Krishna's wives were worried at the time. Who are these? Who's them? Who's name so, them? Lord Krishna was a good husband. He was faithful to his wives. But still, in his heart, he had this very deep attachment to the, the gopis. When Krishna was a young boy, the young he performing his childhood lila, he had lived in Vrindavan. And he had enjoyed being with all these people in Vrindavan. So Krishna Now in in Dwarka Krishna's mother and father are Vasudev and Devaki. So But Krishna in his dream he would call out, Oh Mother Yashoda, oh Baba Nanda, Nanda Baba. So Vasudev and Devaki were, ah, we're, we're Krishna's parents. Why is calling them? Why is saying some other names? We are the parents. Krishna has very special pastimes which are very deep and very confusing for ordinary people. Krishna in Vrindavan is a little different from Krishna in Dwarka. So Krishna Bhagavan is a In Dwarka, Lord Krishna's consorts are all Lakshmi's, the goddesses of fortune. <coughs> So, Lakshmi wanted one day, she wanted to try to go to Vrindavan. Because she'd heard about Lord Krishna's Rasa dance. 
And she was thinking, I also want to dance with Krishna. I am I'm a, I'm his wife. I should dance with him. So Lakshmi went to Vrindavan, but she could not get into Rasali. They told Lakshmi, you want to dance Rasa Lila? You have to be a gopi. You have to get married to a gopa. You have to marry a cowherd boy. And you have to make cow dung. Can you make cow dung patties? <laughs> and can you milk a cow? <laughs> then you have to take birth in the family of the cow. <laughs> if you take birth in the womb of a gopi, then you can be a, you can grow up to be a gopi, then you can take part in Krishna Shastra. So Lakshmi doesn't belong in Vrindavan. But she went to Vrindavan. But she didn't get into Krishna's pastime. She's there in Vrindavan doing tapasya. Now usually Lakshmi, we see that, that Lakshmi, her hands are open to giving blessings. You see the money coming from the Asani. Right? But in Vrindavan, Lakshmi is praying. Praying to all the bridge passing people. Please bless me that I can also get to join Krishna's pastime. So it's a difference, different place, Dwarka, Vrindavan, a different mood. So Krishna, Krishna was living in Dwarka with all of his wives. And they had so many children, their family had expanded so many. And there were no divorces. <laughs> there was no separation. Krishna was with all of the wives. But still Krishna at night he would dream and he would dream of Vrinda. So the wives were a bit worried about this. So money in there So they they did not know who are all these people. Because they'd never been to Vrindavan. So Krishna Lila is like this. We want to understand Krishna's pastimes. We want to join in Krishna's pastime. We want to go there and be with Krishna. And take part in some of these pastimes. Maybe you want to go to Dwarka, I don't know. <laughs> There's a, it said a, there was this one man, one devotee, he was doing Raganuga Bhakti in Vrindavan. 
But somehow he had a desire that he wanted to see Dwarka. He'd never been to Dwarka. So he So this this man was in, he was doing Raganuga Bhakti in Vrindavan, meditating on Radha and Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. So but somehow this other man came said, you know, I'm going to Dwarka. You want to, you can come with me, I'll take you to Dwarka. So he thought, very nice. Uh, I'm going, yeah, sure, I'll come with you. And they went off to Dwarka. So you Now to go to Dwarka, it, it, they have a custom that you should get, they put a, they burn you with a, the form of the Sudarsan Chakra, the, the, the metal Sudarsan Chakra, and they make it hot and they put it in your skin and put a mark there to show that you're, you're qualified to enter Dwarka. Just like the Sri Vaishnavas, the Sri Vaishnavas, they they don't put tila, they they, they do they do put chan, they do put some tila on, but they also burn themselves with the mark of Vishnu, with the the conch shell and the and the, the Sudarshan chakra, they put it in the skin. We don't do that, we just put tea like, we just put Gopi Chandan tea like. But the Sri Vaishnavas, they will, they will put the hot object. So the same way you go to Dwarka, so some people, they go to Dwarka, they will, they will, to show that they're the devoted themselves to Dwarka, they will put the Surasan Chakra on the Dwarka. 150 years ago, they In the past, maybe not so much now, but in the past, they were doing this. So, the man, he, he got burned with the... You know, they have anointment, so it doesn't burn you. Just like in Malaysia, they have the walk on the hot coals, right? Oh, huh? no, no, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> you just run and bring <laughs> uh, But I'm, some, I met several people who did it. Yeah, it's com quite common here in Malaysia. Yeah? They put the hot coals uh, in there. People, and they train you up, you know, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> But we don't let the women do it. <laughs> Only <laughs> men. <laughs> anyway, so the people get burned with the Sudarshan Chakra to show they're entered into Dwarka. <laughs> so this man who'd come from Vrindavan, he'd been staying at Radhakund, and he went to Dwarka. And then after being in Dwarka and Darshan, then he came back to Vrindavan. So even the Radha ko Vrindavan dala, so Dwarka pitit to be on the Radha ko. But when he came back to Radha Kund, all the Babaji's there in Radha Kund, they, they wouldn't go near him, they, they wouldn't speak to him, they wouldn't, they wouldn't go near to him. So Radha ko Vrindavan dala, and then he would have the Babaji would have faced the Chitam, you went to Dwarka. You got 
the sugars and chocolate mark put on you? You've gone there, you've given up Krishna? You've gone to Krishna, Vasudev Krishna. We're worshipping Nanda, Nanda Maharaj's son. Krishna here in Vrindavan. Get out from here. We don't want to see you. They completely rejected him. So the He'd been doing Raganuga Bhakti for many years. So the Raganuga Bhakti was But he got rejected. So he went to his room and he sat, he closed it, locked the door, and he sat inside the room and he just went, he sat in in trance and feeling separation from Krishna. So uh the room of Modi so for several days they didn't see him, they didn't know what had happened. So So after some days they, they had to break, break open the door and inside the house they found a pile of ashes. It burned the, this body and burned them up. So the in the fire of separation from Krishna, he gave up the body. So, like that, you have to be very faithful to which particular form of Krishna you worship. So, if you want to go to Vrindavan, you have to worship Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. If you go to the Sri Vaishnavas, and the Madhvas and like that, they don't go to Vrindavan. They can go to Dwarka. They cannot go to Vrindavan. Only the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami, they're learning about Vrindavan and how Krishna is the son of Nanda Maharaj. They can go into Vrindavan. So Mahaprabhu Bhakta Rupa Goswami Nalam Ari Goswami Nalam Aumunda Krishna Bhava Vridana the Kurisata Aumalam Bhakti Sata Aumunda Vridana Bhakti. So we have to be careful not to get diverted from the path. Svadhana Namalakuma Bhavna is not number the Uyana no Kutta the Tauri Bhakti. Of course, it's also very wonderful to go to Dwarka. You know, it's also the spiritual world. It, it's just a different mood from Vrindavana. Because in Vrindavan, everyone is experiencing, they're seeing Krishna not as God, but they see him as the son of Nanda Maharaj. But in Dwarka, they see Krishna as the Supreme Lord. They see him, they, but they worship him with so much opulence. It's a different mood. But it's all the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there is variety. The Mayavadis, they don't see any variety. They only see the oneness. The Buddhists, for the Buddhists, there's no variety. 
There's no male and there's no female. Everybody is good. Could you imagine it? You're in the room, everybody's Buddha. That is their goal. To become Buddha. But in but in Vaikuntha there is variety. I mean, you can go on from Vaikuntha, you can go on to Goloka. And you can experience unlimited variety. So, an unlimited happiness eternally. We cannot begin to understand what is real happiness. So, we think happiness is, you know, how to, I have this, I have that, I have my car, I have my home, I have my children, I have, we're thinking this is happiness. That is not Real happiness is in the in the soul. And when you come to experience your relationship with Krishna, then you can experience what is happiness. So to do that, you have to chant. So you have to chant the holy name. You have, to, you have to read the Bhagavad Gita. To worship Krishna. Then you can one day experience what is real happiness. We were we were reading Bhagavad Gita last night at singing Siput. We Prabhupada's purport spoke about Maharaj Yamanacharya. Right? Yamanacharya was before Ramanujacharya. They were the Acharyas in Tirupat in uh, Trichy in Sri Rangam. So Yamanacharya and then Trichy Acharya. Lord Rangana lives in Sri Rangam. So Yamanacharya, he was one point in charge of the temple. After Yamanacharya, Ramanujacharya was in charge. So Yamanacharya, he'd been the king. He'd been a king, but he he'd given it all up. And he said, since I've become the devotee, now I've experienced real happiness. When I was a king, I had the illusion of happiness. If you read the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatana Goswami, he tells about Gopkumar, a cowherd boy from Govardhan. Right. So he, he he was traveling and he somehow he went to this kingdom where the king was a great devotee. So 
So Gop Kumar was very attractive to be in a kingdom where the king is a devotee and they were giving a lot of prasadam and they were worshipping the deities nicely. Gop Kumar is in the Naga-Jaut was the Vrinda Ahapa, Manna and the Puri Bhaktarada, or Prasadam Dhanam Purta Rumpo, Sarpas Tegan Kama, Gop Kumar Prasadam Bhaktarada. So Gop Kumar was going every day there to the temple and after some time the king started to notice. He saw this young boy there, this boy, coward boy from Govardhan, he saw him there. So So the king liked him and the king didn't have any son of his own. So he adopted this Gop Kumar, he made him his adopted son. But after some time the king died and Gop Kumar was the only son, so he became the king. So and so as the king, he would he ordered more prasadam distribution, more nice programs to worship the deity. But still there were problems. Some people would complain, no, I'm not going to take that prasadam, that person there. They cook, they take, they're not pure, they touch the food, it's contaminated. People say, oh, prasadam contaminated? Is it possible? No, prasadam can never be contaminated. But some people very caste conscious, and they said, no, that person, low class, he touched the food, he took it out from the temple. No, it's not prasadam anymore. So these were all problems for Gopakumar. Because these were the senior devotees talking like this. So Gopakumar was thinking, he was a king, but he saw oh, so many troubles, so many problems. So he saw more and more problems coming. So he, he ran away from being the king. So our the pensioner, our mother, go nalu utlu utta na go go nadi. So you cannot. You have to, you want to get free of troubles. We have to take shelter of Lord Krishna. So our mother, the world of the income part of the parish, now a million of the hundreds of hundreds of people, now that we have to stop our work. Just like. The, Gop Kumar, the cowherd boy, he ran away, but wherever he went, he found there was always some problem, some fault. And it was only when he finally came back to Vrindavan in Govardhan Hill that he was actually happy. So, if Gop Kumar didn't be a Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill, he was not happy. There he could be with Krishna and Krishna's friends. Alright, any question? Yes, Prabhu. You were mentioning about the nature of the service to engage with his masters. But how about the impersonal? Are they engaged in the service by indirectly engaged? So, Prabhu Giri Gita, Maramal Sunnar, Yerikya Atma Oda Nath Dharma Nath Kandu Sirdi. Apro Mayavati Nala Aungi Pudi, Aungi Pudi, Aungi Pudi Dharma Nath, Yerikya Dharma Nath Dharma Nath Dharma Nath Dharma Nath. Yeah, the impersonalist, their goal is to merge, enter into the oneness of the Brahman. 
சோ மாயாபதியினுடைய லட்சியம் என்னது நானும் ஐக்கியமாகணும் பிரபஞ்சோகம் போட்டு ஐக்கியமாகணும் அதான் அவங்க லட்சியம் So their process is the process of negation of activity. So Aungrodo would be in the Venda Venda and the Marida and then go on. Some say, see no evil. So you could not own no back or there. Hear no evil. Now own no key for there. Speak no evil. And they own no face or there. I would be in So they think, don't see anything, don't hear anything, don't speak anything. So sometimes these people, they will make a vow not to speak. Monavrat. Must be very difficult. I knew one man, in, there was this one man in Calcutta, he was a life member. He said, I do Monavrat every Sunday. So, Monday to Saturday, he speaks constantly. Monday to Saturday, he speaks. Every, yeah, and all the other days is caught. Constantly. So, Mona Brat is not really the solution. We sold a book one time. Yeah, we were, in, I was in India and we were there was this temple on a hillside and there was a cave there and we thought let's go in and see because we could see some kind of temple so we went inside and there was a yogi there one guy with the long hair and we went in and he hit me to so we saw, we saw, okay, we preached to him, you know, and so we told them we are from Hare Krishna movement, we have temples all over the world, we are here preaching Bhagavad Gita, and we showed him our book, the Bhagavad Gita. So, Maharaj, you give me a preaching. You give me some help, and I give Hare Krishna, and go, all over Hare Krishna, and go, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, and we told them, we said, you know, you should get one book, you know, you can buy a book. <laughs> so he had a board with chalk, he wrote on it, how much is it? <laughs> <laughs> so the yogi with chalk and he bought the book. True story. <laughs> that was in the 1970s, 50 years. So, stopping speaking and these things, that's the Mayavadi process. Because they think all words are not necessary, no need to speak. And they think nothing is real. So don't see anything. They want to stop. So they often they go to, into the mountains or go into the jungle alone, just meditate. And they think that is spiritual. But they don't know what is real spiritual activity. They are thinking activities, all activities are material. They, but they don't know there's spiritual activities different from material. Just like there's spiritual food, karma-free food and karma food. 
So that there are activities which do not give karma. So there, there are three types. There is karma, vi karma, and a karma. So V karma means activities against the scripture. V karma means eating, intoxicating. That's all V karmic activities. But then karma activities, karma is to enjoy. Karma You do some punya. Go to temple, break a coconut, bring the bells, some karma. But a karma means activities where you did service for Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna, eating prasadam, worshiping the deity, that is akarma, no reaction. So we have to learn what is the difference between karma and akarma. Mayavadis, they are doing, but Bhagavad Gita says, Describes it, their work is action in inaction. Mayavadi. Mayavadi. Yeah, they are action. Oh, Mayavadi. They're not doing anything, but they're getting reaction. Because how long can you do nothing? You're going to stop, you're going to do things, you're going to eat. <laughs> you're going to walk around, you're going to talk. You can't stop everything forever. And when you start, you're going to, even if you don't do anything, still your karma is there, you get the anxious. From the past. Reaction. But for the devotee, the devotee is in action, in action. The devotee is just like Arjuna, he's fighting. But he's doing it for Krishna. So no reaction. Just like the soldier goes to fight for the country. And even he may kill a lot of people. But he doesn't get any karma. He gets a medal. He's a great soldier. He's a hero. So the same way devotees fighting for Krishna. No karma. Thank you very much, so it's for the official. So actually Mara Sabus from last week. But this somehow Maharaj couldn't come for the installation. So Maharaj asked me whether where you got the permission or not. So I told Maharaj from Muji. So what you got from Muji, Maharaj, where Walter, Koko, your son, speak to your son, and uh, Julian uh, Swing, was six, seven, eight, you got from Muji, uh, Maharaj. The permission, Lord, he was six, seven, thousand. Permission from Muji. Somehow, uh, you also plan to expand the hall, Maharaj. Now you can see it's very, become very small. So we are in the plan to reopen the wall and build another small hall. So, you know, 
Maharaj will be here and then Maharaj will 